Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy and today we're taking a look at how to gather information from a form and put it directly into Microsoft Excel. So this is a, an interesting topic where uh, you know we can easily set up a Microsoft form um, and have that information pulled directly into an Excel document. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways about doing this. Uh, one would be just to create a form directly and uh, obviously as that form gets populated, it will add into an Excel document. Or um, I'm gonna show you one in a slightly more different way, which would actually be um, to open up Excel and create the form directly in Excel um, to gather this information. Now there'll be no VBA required. This is a very straightforward and easy to follow tutorial. So if you do find it useful and uh, informative, do hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you happen to be new to the channel and not yet subscribed, do consider subscribing. By subscribing, you're going to be kept up to date with all the various hints and tips that we do here at That Office Guy. Right, with this said and done, let's jump on over to the desktop and uh, take a look about how to do this. Fantastic. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to um, demonstrate all of this via uh, the web browser. Okay, so uh, this should be accessible for almost everybody. Um, you can also sign up for Microsoft Forms uh, via a three Microsoft account uh, as well. And obviously Excel online um, as a part of your, your standard online package. And so none of this, you know, you can actually sign up for 365, a free version, and still be able to do this exact thing. Now, obviously the differences here is that uh, if you have a free account, you're only going to be able to access this thing, the, all of this um, via the web browser. Whereas if you have uh, a more advanced license uh, with 365, for example, you'll also be able to have this uh, running on your desktop. Not so much the form side of things, but definitely the Excel. So in this example here, I'm going to set everything up from a browser perspective, but uh, you can adapt as needed. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a look at a couple of things. So, so the first thing uh, to do is obviously navigate over to office.com. And from here, we obviously have all of the apps on the, the app bar here on the left hand side. And um, forms is the first thing, right? So Microsoft Forms is the place that we're going to actually set up the data capture form. Okay, and we could, if we wanted to, just create a new form directly here inside uh, Microsoft Forms app. Now, doing that is one way, but um, sometimes it's actually better to start at Excel level. So what we're going to do is actually from our app section over here is just click on Excel and that's going to open up a new document. So from here, uh, what we want to do is actually just head over to the ribbon and click on the insert button uh, on insert tab here. Uh, and then you'll see forms is just here, right? So if we can choose from a drop down and we can choose a new form. This actually then opens up a new form template directly in the web browser. So quite straightforward so far. Uh, we've gone from Excel straight to Microsoft Forms and we're creating a new form. So um, what we're gonna do is we're going to have a very clean data entry from this form and it's gonna populate an Excel document. That's the document that we had open here, book one. And um, once we have all that information, we're going to be able to do things with it. So the first thing that we want to do is actually give this uh, a bit of a name, right? So we don't want to necessarily call it, uh, you know, book one. We're just going to call this sales tracker, for example, okay? And if we wanted to, we could give it a description. Now, I'm not going to in this example, but feel free to do so. Uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is um, ultimately head over and add a, a question, right? The very first question that we want to, to gather. So we're gonna hit that and add new, and then we end up with uh, several different options here, okay? Lots of different options to choose from within Microsoft Forms. Um, and ultimately, the first thing that we want to, want to do is actually just have a bit of a, um, I'm gonna go for the choice, okay? I'm gonna make this uh, quick whole thing up as we go along. So <laughs> uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just say uh, sales location, okay? That's the first one. And we're going to have a couple of options here. We'll say UK, we'll say uh, US, uh, and maybe we'll just add another option here and uh, maybe Canada, for example. Okay, so we have three countries um, and we're going to make this a mandatory field just by clicking the required option. We only want one answer, right? We cannot be in multiple locations here. So we're not going to have multiple answers. From here, we can also see that we want it to be a drop down menu. We can do that, or we can just have the radio buttons that you see here. I'm just going to leave it as is, and we're not going to investigate the branching uh, on this particular form. We're going to keep it quite simple. Uh, right, so we're going to add the next question. This time, what we're going to do is um, 
yeah, we're going to go ahead and make a, a text field, okay? So this is going to be the sales um, quantity, okay? So we're going to have to say how many sales were actually achieved. Uh, and then we'll see we have the answer here. Now, from our uh, option here, we can actually click on the restrictions. Um, and uh, this is quite an easy one. If we click on the restrictions section just from the more options, uh, what we can do is from here, we can actually make sure that this is uh, listed as a number, right? Because ultimately the quantity is going to be a number. We want it to be a number and, uh, you know, we have lots of other options um, to choose from, but we're just going to make sure it says number as a number of restrictions. So only numbers will be able to be entered in this particular field. And again, we want that to be uh, required. We're going to add another option here. And uh, again, this time I'm going to go with a text field and um, sales value. Okay. And uh, this is a game where you could potentially go into different directions, but uh, I'm just going to leave it as sales value, come down to our more options, game kick on restrictions, and make sure that is listed as a number. Okay. So, so far we have a sales location, the sales quantity, and the sales value. Now, the other things that we can gather here, um, you know, are automatic when we get the response, and uh, we'll go through some of that in a moment as well. Is there anything else uh, that we want to add? We could add as many different fields as we want. Um, we could go into a lot of detail, such as, uh, you know, um, you know, what, what date range do the sales represent? Was it for a month period? Was it a daily sales? Whatever you, it might be, right? We can add multiple. I'm just going to leave it quite simple, though. Just these three questions. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the ellipses options at the top right hand side here and get to more settings. We're going to click on settings here. And here we can see that who can fill this form in? Anyone within the organization can respond. And we are recording their name. OK, if we wanted to, we could have one response per person or we wanted to limit it to very specific people. We could do so. So this is actually ideal, right? So I want it to be anyone in my organization and I want to record their name. OK, and then I want to accept their responses. Uh, okay, and uh, it's not a start date or an end date or anything like that in terms of uh, yeah, customization for those responses. So actually, this is set up quite nicely for, for my purposes here, but you do have a lot of flexibility is to say if you wanted uh, people to respond by a certain time, or if you wanted to shuffle the questions, if you wanted to customize a thank you message after populating anything, uh, you can do all of those things here as well. Um, so with that done, the next thing we can do is actually click on themes. This actually then shows us uh, some presets here. We've got various different colors. We can add our own as well. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and choose this one here because it kind of fits in with my sales theme a little bit. Once that's done, we can go ahead and click on preview. And here's is what the form will look like. So it obviously automatically knows who's logged in. So we're going to gather all the information about the person who's actually populating this form. We know their sales location or whatever. We can go ahead and tick that. Uh, we can obviously use the uh, sales quantity, which we can just say 10, for example. And then we can go for a sales value of, let's say, 300. OK, and all these are just number based fields. Um, and obviously we have uh, the sales location. Now, with all that done, I can go ahead and submit that. And we obviously have to thank you. It was submitted. We can see further or add a further response if we wanted to, or we can go back into and edit the questions. Now that's actually been set up, all this information is, you know, it goes into the responses section here. So we click on responses and here we can see we've had one response. It took uh, average time of 27 seconds to actually populate. Maybe it's an active status. Here we have the open in Excel, okay? And from here, we can see that we actually have a little cloud icon next to the uh, Excel icon. That means that uh, this is completely linked. Every time a new submission is made within this form, it goes directly into our Excel document. So that's super handy. We also get a few graphical representations here um, if you wanted to see who's actually been responding, where the sales have been coming from, the sales quantities and all that kind of stuff. Not actually the best way for an analysis, but um, gives you a bit of an overview, I guess, depending on the questions that you have. With that being said, we can go ahead and click on Open in Excel. This opens up um, the data capture, right? So here we have all of that information that we were, we were looking at, right? So we now have the ID of the, uh, of the actual um, question or, or form that was filled in. And obviously, that's a unique ID that's going to build up over time. We have the exact time that it was started and the completion time that it was started. We obviously have the email address, the name of the person. Then we have the three questions that were answered. OK, so above and beyond just the questions, you end up with all of this basic information as well. So, you know, uh, how long it took uh, to actually complete just by 
taking away um, the start time from the completion time. We also have the email address of the person who populated the form and filled it in. We have the name. So from this information, you can do quite a lot of analysis. And obviously, depending on what customized questions you have, you can obviously do a lot more with this. The benefit to this is it's put straight into a uh, an Excel table. Okay, so you can use thing, things like Power Query to query this particular data set uh, with any document, be that from a desktop app or from the cloud. So you get lots of functionality here when it's in an Excel table and uh, it's really simple to do. So obviously we have um, Form 1 as a tab down here and we also have the original sheet, but we, uh, we have this one here. So lots to do with this particular data and um, lots of things that you can start to mess around with. So ultimately, as more data gets populated, this is going to continue to fill this document. And once that happens, we can do things with it. So for example, if we wanted to do a sum if based on a sales location, we could absolutely do that. And it's quite straightforward. We could just go equals sum if. I always prefer to use sum ifs rather than if. Um, and what we can do is see the sum range. Well, the sum range is going to be my um, sales location or my sale value, right? So I'm going to choose my sales value here um, and I'm going to choose HH now. The other thing to do is when you're inside the uh, desktop version, you can actually use the table name and the table header as a, a point of reference. With the Excel online version, you don't have so much flexibility, which is a little bit frustrating. But nonetheless, uh, what you can do is obviously select the entire column here um, and you'll just be able to do that. And obviously with this being done, you can then go across criteria range, which will be here. And you can say the criteria could be UK and close that off and then you're going to get an answer. Um, so really straightforward guys to actually be able to um, you know, fill out all of this information within the table and uh, pull back some answers. So it's a great way to actually create a, a dynamic data set that's easy to, to accomplish the results that you're looking for without the need of any complicated formulas or VBA. So a very, very straightforward. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on open in desktop app. This is going to um, just open up the Excel document uh, in uh, the browser, uh, sorry, in the desktop version. And uh, what this will allow me to do is actually show you what the table might look like. Okay, so straight away here, we have the table design and it's called table one, just at the top here. And if I wanted to, I can now start using these headers, right? So again, in this formula over here, I'm just gonna go equals sum ifs, open up a bracket. Now my sum range is gonna be the sales value. And I see how I have this black arrow now just up here. If I click that, it's going to put into our formula here, table one and the sales value. That's what we're summarizing. If I hit comma on this, uh, we want the criteria. The criteria is gonna be the sales location. So I can click on that. And again, this is now table one at sales location. And again, the criteria for this would be um, UK in um, quotations. So we're gonna do that, close that off and press return. And straight away, you know, we're able to get straight to the results that we're looking for. Now, one thing that uh, seems to be a bit odd is this is not actually calculating. So let's go find out why that is uh, not doing what we're expecting it to do. So it is looking for UK. UK exists within our data set, but it's not actually doing a sum. And that's going to be because these are not actually being recorded as um, numbers. OK, so uh, straight away, we can see here we've got a little apostrophe just above the 10 and the, the 300 here. And that's because these fields are not number fields and they should actually be numbers. So what we can do to rectify this is uh, click on this little sign here and convert to number. That's going to convert that to a number. And I'm going to do the same on this particular one and convert to number. Now our formula is actually working here and we can see that it's actually really legible and easy to read. So it says that we are summing the table one sales value and uh, we're going to summarize this by table one sales location where the location equals uh, UK. Um, so really straightforward um, to basically do all of your formulas and analysis directly from this particular data set. So as more information gets put into this data set, um, your analysis will become more and more powerful. So a really super easy and fun way to actually start integrating Microsoft Forms with your everyday workflows. Instead of using complicated VBA uh, data capture forms directly built into an Excel XM um, you know, file itself, you can actually now go ahead and use Microsoft Forms 
um, to capture all of that information for you. And of course, you can do lots of fun things with those forms. They can be shared um, directly into things like Microsoft Teams or even embedded into an email that you send out. It makes everything so much easier to capture that information that's crucial to your work within Microsoft Excel. So hopefully, guys, um, this has given you a little bit of an insight as to how to go about actually you know, setting up a form linking that form into uh, Microsoft Excel and uh, doing something with that data. If you have found this video useful and informative, please do go ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it and consider subscribing to the channel. By subscribing, you're going to be kept up to date with all the various hints and tips that we do here at That Office Guy. And with all this said and done, we hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.